born on May the 21st of 1960 in Wisconsin, Jeffrey Dahmer was an American cannibal and serial killer. Sentenced to life in prison for the murder of 17 men between 1978 and 1991. Often described as an energetic and happy child until the age of four, when surgery to correct a double hernia seemed to take a toll on Jeff's mental state. Throughout the course of his childhood, he became increasingly withdrawn following the birth of his younger brother, and had problems adapting to basic social interaction. By his early teens, he was disengaged, friendless and completely isolated. Although Jeff claims that his compulsions towards necrophilia and murder began around the age of 14, it appears that the breakdown of his parents' divorce may have been the catalyst for turning his disturbing thoughts into reality. Shortly following his graduation from high school in June of 1978, Dharma picked up the male hitchhiker and took him home to his parents' house. When the boy tried to leave, Dharma assaulted him with a hammer, bashing him upside the head before strangling him to death. He dismembered the corpse of his first victim, packed the body parts in plastic bags and buried them behind his parents' home. He later exhumed the remains, crushed the bones with a sledgehammer and scattered them across a wooded ravine. By the time of his first killing, Dahmer's alcohol consumption had spun out of control. He dropped out of college after one quarter term while his father insisted that he join the army. Dahmer enlisted in late December 1978 and was posted to Germany shortly thereafter. In early 1981, Dahmer's alcoholism continued to spiral out of control and Jeff was given a discharge from the army. Soon after, Dahmer returned home and was arrested later that year for disorderly conduct. This prompted his father to send Dahmer to live with his grandmother in Wisconsin, but his alcohol problem persisted and he was arrested the following summer for indecent exposure. He was arrested once again in 1986, when two boys accused him of masturbating in front of them, and he received a one-year probationary sentence. In September of 1987, Dharma took his second victim, who was also a young male. They checked into a hotel room where Jeff strangled the boy in a drunken rage. He bought a large suitcase to transport the body to his grandmother's basement, where he dismembered and masturbated on the corpse before disposing the remains. Dharma's killing spree lasted for more than 13 years. During that time, he sought out mostly African-American men at gay bars, he lured them home with promises of money or sex, and gave them alcohol laced with drugs before strangling them to death. He would then sexually molest the corpses before dismembering them, often keeping their genitals as morbid souvenirs. He frequently took photos of his victims at various stages of decomposition, so he could recollect each act afterward and relive the experience. Dharma's grandmother eventually grew tired of Jeff's turmoil with alcohol, and in 1988 she forced him to move out. That September, Dharma was charged with sexual exploitation and second-degree sexual assault after molesting a young boy. He pleaded guilty, and while awaiting sentencing, Dharma again put his grandmother's basement to gruesome use. In March 1989, he lured, drugged, strangled, dismembered and disposed another young victim before dumping the remains in a nearby river. In May of 1989, at his trial for child molestation, Dharma was the model of remorse, arguing in his own defense about how he had seen the error of his ways, and that his arrest marked a turning point in his life. His defense counsel argued that he needed treatment, and the judge agreed, handing down a one-year prison sentence on day release allowing Dharma to work at his job during the day and return to the prison at night to serve out his time. Less than a year later, Jeffrey Dharma was granted an early release by the judge, after serving only 10 months of his sentence. Dharma's victim count accelerated over the following year, with 12 more young men taken in the same manner as his previous victims. He developed rituals as he progressed, experimenting with chemical means of disposal and often consuming the flesh of his victims. 
to settle his sadistic curiosity, Dharma began drilling into their skulls while they were still alive. He was careful to select vulnerable people on the fringes of society, making their disappearances less noticeable and reducing the chance of his capture. On May the 27th, 1991, now living on his own in a small apartment, Dharma's neighbor called the police to report that an Asian boy was running naked in the street. When the police arrived, the boy was incoherent and they accepted the word of Dharma that the boy was his 19-year-old lover. The police escorted Dharma and the boy home, clearly not wishing to become involved in a homosexual altercation. They quickly left the scene without performing a search of the apartment. Once the police were gone, Dharma strangled the boy and proceeded with his usual rituals. Had they conducted a routine search, police would have found the body of Dama's 12th victim, along with the various remains Jeff displayed around the apartment as ghastly decorations. Dama's luck finally ran out on July the 22nd, 1991, when two Milwaukee police officers picked up a 32-year-old African-American man who was wandering the streets with a handcuff dangling from his wrist. They decided to investigate the man's claims that someone had drugged and restrained him. They soon arrived at Dama's apartment, where he calmly offered to get the keys for the handcuffs. The man claimed Jeff had threatened him with a knife, and when officers entered his bedroom, they noticed photographs of dismembered bodies posted on his wall. Dama was subdued by the officers, and subsequent searches revealed a severed head in the refrigerator. As they continued to ransack the apartment, police found three more heads in the freezer and the catalog of other horrors, including preserved skulls, jars containing human remains, and an extensive collection of disturbing photographs. The trial of Jeffrey Dahmer began in January of 1992 under strict precautions, including an eight-foot wall of security glass that separated him from the gallery. Dahmer initially pleaded not guilty to all charges, despite having confessed to the killings during police interrogation, but he eventually changed his plea to guilty by virtue of insanity. His defense offered the gruesome details of his crimes as proof that only someone in Zing could commit such terrible acts. But despite the defense, the jury chose to believe the prosecution's assertion that Dharma was fully aware of his actions and chose to commit them anyway. On February the 15th, 1992, they returned after approximately 10 hours deliberation to find him guilty on all counts. He was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms in prison, with an additional term tacked on in May of that year. Dharma adjusted well to prison life, although he was initially kept separated from the general population. He found religion in the form of books and photos sent to him by his father, and he was granted permission to be baptized by a local pastor. On November the 28th, 1994, in accordance with his inclusion in regular work details, Dharma was assigned to work with two other convicted murderers. After they had been left alone to complete their tasks, guards returned to find that Christopher Scalva had brutally beaten both men with a metal bar from the prison weight room. A few hours later, Jeffrey Dharma was pronounced dead, bringing the last chapter of his life to a violent end. In 2015, Scarva spoke to the New York Post about his reasons for killing Dharma. He claimed that he was disturbed not only by Dharma's crimes, but by a habit that Jeff had developed by using severed limbs from prison food to antagonize the other inmates. After being taunted by Dharma during their work detail, Scarva said that he confronted Jeff about his crimes before beating the two men to death. He also claimed that the prison guards allowed the murders to happen by leaving them alone with no supervision by authorities. <laughs>